Whispering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So, disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. It's how you hide a little, hide a little lie. When Rudy Giuliani shared bad intel from Ukraine, or when TikTok influencers say COVID can cause pain, they're laundering disinfo when we really should take note and not support their lies with our wallet, voice, or vote. Oh, information laundering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So this information's origin seems likely less atrocious. <laughs> <laughs> That's now a law enforcement official. This is somebody with so few useful skills that she describes herself in the first words of her own bio as a, quote, internationally recognized expert on disinformation. The difference, I guess, between your opinion and our opinion is that as despicable as it is that CNN propagated this disinformation, I, I wouldn't shut them down. I wouldn't lecture them. I wouldn't put it on a government website that CNN's wrong for propagating disinformation. The problem you have is you're not even willing to admit, I mean, we can't even have an agreement on what the FBI said was disinformation. How do you propose that you're going to have an office of disinformation governance if you see the problem in even determining what is so disinformation? So let's, let's have a look at the person whom you've selected to head this new disinformation policing effort, and let's look at what she has been spreading online. She has, for starters, consistently misinformed the public about the Hunter Biden laptop story and spread the lie that it was Russian propaganda. Here she is on October the 14th saying, disinformation experts say there are multiple red flags that raise doubts about their authenticity, meaning the emails, including questions about whether the laptop actually belongs to Hunter Biden. Of course, as it turns out, that's totally false. This laptop has been authenticated both by government entities and by independent news organizations. She went on. Here she is again, the same interview, saying that we should view it, meaning the laptop and apparently the whole story, as a Trump campaign product. That is also a lie, which you know. You know it's not a Trump campaign product. It never was a Trump campaign product. But she didn't stop there. Here she is on October the 22nd uh, on, in 2020, this time taking to social media, saying that Biden notes 50 former NATSEC officials and five former CIA heads that believe the laptop is a Russian influence op. Laundering here, using government, former government officials to launder the lie that this was in fact a Russian influence op, which of course is not true at all. Here she is also on October the 22nd, still on social media, this time saying, the emails don't need to be altered to be part of an influence campaign. Of course, they weren't altered. Voters deserve that context, not a fairy tale about a laptop repair shop. Of course, we know the only person in all of this telling a fairy tale is Ms. Jankowitz on social media repeatedly for days and days on end. Imagine that, you know, with President Trump right now calling all of these news organizations that have uh, inconvenient for him stories that they that they're getting out there that he's calling fake news and now lashing out at platforms. I would never want to see our executive branch have that sort of power. Da, 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 da. Hagrid. Exactly what is that? That run is a hippogriff. First thing you want to know about hippogriffs is that they're very proud creatures, very easily offended. You do not want to insult a hippogriff. It may just be the last thing you ever do. Now, who'd like to come and say hello?